everybody. I'm Dr. Susan Brown, Director of the Center for Better Bones and your bone health nutritionist. You know, we've been talking about magnesium and I brought to your attention some very fascinating studies showing that when people had adequate intake of magnesium between the diet and the supplements, they actually had a great reduction in fracture, like 60% less than the women who had low levels of magnesium intake. I also showed you another study where they looked at men over many years, men and women, actually, and the people with the highest blood levels of magnesium actually did not fracture at all over these 25 years, where the people with the lower levels fractured much more. So we see that magnesium is truly one of these underappreciated bone building nutrients, important for so many aspects for our health, but certainly for, for bone health. So the question is, how do I know, how do you know, if your magnesium level is really one that's gonna support bone? Now that's an interesting problem because unlike vitamin D, where we know we can easily test it, have an accurate test, know our levels, with magnesium, there's not really an accessible, accurate test. There is one test, which is the serum magnesium test, a simple blood magnesium test that's often done and I'm going to explain to you some new tips and secrets we've learned about this test. It is a test your doctor might do, but the problem is that it's not very accurate and it often misses serious levels of magnesium inadequacy and even deficiency. However, there is one researcher, Dr. Ron Ilin, who's been working on this problem of seeing how we can use the inexpensive accessible serum magnesium test to assess magnesium adequacy. And what he has discovered is that you must be at the very high end of the reference range to be anything, to have any kind of chance of adequate magnesium. And in fact, he says anything than the lower half of the reference range is actually magnesium deficiency. And so you're gonna see here, if we look at the reference ranges, we first look at Mayo Clinic. This is kind of a standard reference range. They're, they haven't been adjusted recently. They say the serum magnesium should be between 1.8 and 2.3. So we know by Dr. Elin's statement, you want to be very close to this 2.3. You want to be very high. Now, if you go to the FDA and their new suggestions, the FDA is saying the range is 1.8 to 3.6. And they're trying to compensate for the fact that this test does not really is, is missing a lot of magnesium deficiency. And in this test, you again want to be in that middle range. You want to be more towards the 3.6. You say you want to be at least, you know, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7. So this is a very handy thing. Your doctor's likely to do serum magnesium test. Just make sure you're right towards the high end of that reference range and try to use the FDA reference range, which, which goes to a height of 3.6. Now I would say there's other more refined tests for magnesium like red blood cell magnesium. Just the other day, someone was telling me they had their serum measured and it showed normal and the red blood showed low. The red blood cell magnesium is a better test, but it's a little harder to get, more expensive. And there's, they are also developing an ionized magnesium level. When that's, when that's perfected, that's gonna be a helpful test. For now, know that you wanna be really towards the high end of the serum magnesium range. And just one last thing while we're talking about magnesium. If you say, I, well, I believe you, Susan, I believe magnesium is great for bone, but I get a loose stool when I use magnesium, then I want you to know that there's a few things you can do. One, be sure to spread your magnesium throughout the day, take little doses of it. Number two is change your overall diet to use more hot and pot food, cooked food, more warm drinks to try to make your digestion a bit stronger. Because if you take a lot of cold drinks and cold food, it might tend to give you weak digestion and make you have a loose stool that can be worsened by magnesium. But if you try these tricks and you still say, look, when I get the 500 milligrams of magnesium or 400, I get diarrhea. That means because you have a block to magnesium uptake, uh, my mentor, Dr. Russell Jaffe, has researched this, written on this, and there are some remedies to that block to magnesium uptake. So if that's your case, just give us a call at the Center for Better Bones and we'll send you some literature showing you how you can correct that block to magnesium uptake with some simple supplementation. In the meantime, I wish you well and I hope everyone can get more magnesium and enjoy better bones and better body lifelong.